Good evening. I'm uh, Vincent Martin. I'm uh, the token tech guy for the evening. And, and I suspect I represent uh, the, the defeated French as well. <laughs> Get the slides going here. Are you curious about your biology, about your DNA? And I don't mean your ancestry or DNA tests, but understanding what you're made of, how your body functions. I think you should be. I think we all should be curious about our bodies. To have as much interest in the science of our own body as we have about our new cell phone, our next widget, and our best Fitbits. So why should you care about DNA? Because I believe that all things DNA or biology is the next medium with which we will solve problems. And more specifically, our ability to build new and useful things with biology, or what I call synthetic biology, will provide many societal solutions such as alternative energy, materials, foods, medicines, and even cure for diseases. Here's why our biology matters. We are now approximately 7.6 billion people on this earth, a number that could almost double in the next 100 years. This has resulted in a huge demand on our natural resources. In the last 100 years, the rates at which we, people consume resources roughly doubled. Combined with population growth, this has led to a tenfold increase in global natural consumption <clears throat> on, the, on this planet. In the developed world, people now use roughly 16 tons of natural resources per year, and in some up countries, up to 40 tons. As you can easily imagine, this has led to significant deterioration of our environment, from pollution to extreme climate conditions. We can now begin to see the effects in the form of extensive droughts in some regions, leading to more severe forest fires and putting pressure on our food supply, at a time when we need to feed a rapidly growing population. It should be clear to everyone by now that we have a significant problem. And unless we can all agree to change our behavior, we need a new technology innovation vector. We need a new solution. Much like steam, electricity, oil, and silicon have driven the past waves of technology innovation, I believe that biology will drive the next. Why do I believe that? Let me explain. The cost of reading the code of life, that is the A, T, C, and G of your DNA, has dropped at a rate higher than exponential. When the Human Genome Project began in 1990, it had the humble goal of reading the DNA code that makes up a human. That is the set of genes that were passed on to us from our mother, mothers and fathers. It took 13 years and cost over $500 million to decode the first human. But it now costs less than $1,000 and only takes a few weeks. That's almost a one million reduction in cost. So why does this matter? It matters because decoding genomes, whether human, plants, or microbe, gives us the parts lists of biology. And from the parts list, we are quickly solving the puzzle of life, learning how the parts come together to form living organisms or cause disease. So where do we go from here, you ask? So far, we have mostly worked with what nature has provided us. But now that we have the code, why not modify it in a safe, purposeful, and intelligent way? And that, that in essence, describes the emergent discipline of synthetic biology. It's about engineering and biology combined. It's the science of making organisms. It's the redesign and creation of biological parts and systems, the stuff we are made of. Scary, you say. Well, maybe, but we've been playing with genetics and genomes for the last 10,000 years, domesticating plants and animals using breeding and selection. We now have parts lists and some instructions on how to assemble them, so why limit ourselves to what nature has provided? Well, we don't have to anymore. Believe it or not, you can now go to the web and buy your custom favorite gene. <clears throat> Like the 19th century foundries casting new creations in metal, synthetic biology labs, like the DNA foundry at Concordia University, uses engineering principles of design to build things out of DNA. By using computers to drive robots in the lab, the vision of a lonely biologist tinkering in the laboratory bench 
is quickly disappearing. We are no longer limited by the capacity to build things out of DNA. Our limitation is with building things that are functional. However, DNA foundries have accelerated cycles of DNA design, building, and testing so we can get many kicks at the can until we get it right. The work is about producing advanced biofuels, replacing petrochemicals with renewable chemicals, sustainable food production, and even the production of pharmaceuticals and human therapies. For example, in our laboratory, we were able to build a synthetic yeast, the same yeast used to make wine and beer, to make an antimalarial drug instead of alcohol. We use the same yeast to make advanced biofuels and the pain medication morphine, which, we, which, which is normally produced by the opium plant. When it comes to synthetic biology, the future holds mind-boggling potential. Here's, a, here's an example, the cellular pharmacy. This is reprogrammed human cells that when introduced in the body can find diseased cells and destroy or repair them without causing harm to healthy cells. Our next, front, our next frontier, the game changer, that innovation vector, I believe is synthetic biology. It's all about our biology. Hopefully now I've made you curious enough about your biology to get into the vector change that, that I've been talking about. Thank you.